And welcome back to the Minneapolis Northwestern N-Scale Model Railroad Monthly Video Journal. Trying to catch up on some of the projects I'm working on here. Uh, continuing with the uh, details and all that for the silo project and all the little area around it. Working on some trees. Trying to make more trees. So we start out with a uh, some uh, hydrangea bush clippings. These are really nice for uh, making trees. Uh, they've got a kind of a nice natural color to them. We start by uh, snipping off some of the uh, little pokey out parts that we don't need, some old blossoms that can be clipped off. So just kind of trim it down a little bit to uh, kind of clean it up a little bit. And then I start with a couple of different methods you could use for this. Uh, one thing I like as an alternative to uh, spray adhesive, which can get kind of messy, um, is to just use some clump foliage and uh, I kind of tear that up a little bit into some smaller pieces. You'll see what I'm doing here. Tear that up into some small pieces so they're not real big. And then uh, just grab some plain old uh, white glue and uh, start uh, gluing them to the tree. So it works out pretty well. And just grab your glue bottle straight out of the glue bottle and just start blobbing it onto the branches there. Um, I thought about uh, trying to thinning down the glue a little bit and maybe even using a paintbrush to sort of paint on the glue, but uh, this seemed to work pretty well because the clumps help to uh, cover a lot of area on the tree. So I just grab the clump foliage and just stick it on the tree and just try to fill it up wherever I see any bare spots there. Uh, once the glue dries, you don't really see the, any of that white showing through. And sometimes the uh, clumps kind of fall off a little bit and you have to stick them back on them again, but that's why it helps to uh, tear it up and use small pieces so they're not so heavy and uh, they tend to stick a little quicker. So I just keep working my way around the tree and uh, keep putting on the uh, little blobs of glue and clump foliage. You can use a variety of colors and come up with a nice variety of trees. One advantage to uh, this method over spray adhesive is that, that uh, sometimes spray adhesives can get a little uh, hard to control and you wind up with getting the adhesive on the trunk and then as a result you get uh, some of the foliage stuck to the trunk and as you know that doesn't uh, doesn't look the best to have your all your foliage stuck to the trunk so this way it keeps gives you a little more control keeps the, uh, uh, the foliage from getting stuck uh, where you don't want it and uh, takes a little more time. It's not quite as quick as uh, just spraying adhesive on here and then dunking it into some uh, ground foam for coverage. So this way it uh, takes a little longer but uh, you get a little more control and uh, I like the way it looks at the end. You don't have any foliage uh, on the main branches or on the trunk and uh, this is just a nice nice way of uh, putting the foliage on your more control where you want to put it. So And getting it more filled out here. Just keep putting on foliage wherever you see a blank spot. Uh, just pack in a little more, a little more glue if you need it. And fill out the tree. And they look very nice once they get done. As an alternative method, it's the same idea of uh, putting the glue on all the branches first and then just uh, dip the tree into some uh, coarse uh, ground fold. And uh, that's another way of doing it, just to, uh, um, instead of using the clumps, you can just dip it right into some coarse ground foam. And that idea works pretty well too, but it doesn't quite get the same coverage as using the uh, clump foliage. But it's a little quicker, uh, gives you a little different look. Um, this tree turned out uh, looking like uh, maybe some of the leaves had already fallen, so maybe kind of a little bit later fall uh, look to it because once you do get the, uh, uh, the foliage on there, the ground foam, it doesn't quite cover everything and uh, not everything sticks on it, so it's a little bit not quite as dense, not quite as heavy 
coverage of the foliage and as a result it just looks kind of like it's uh, lost some of its leaves already. But it's still kind of an interesting little look to it. Same idea with some uh, different color of foam. Uh, I tend, sometimes I'll use uh, uh, a couple of different colors mixed together. Here I've got some yellow and some green shades mixed together to uh, kind of give a little different, different shading. And here's a variety of colors that you can use on the uh, on the trees. Get a nice, nice uh, uh, set of colors for your fall colors. Still some green in there as well. So nice variety of colors helps uh, give you a good good fall look. I use some uh, mix of colors. You can see I've got some yellow in here and some orange, even some. Uh, uh, kind of real faint uh, green, faded green in that. Here it's another mix of, little batch of mix of colors. Got some yellow and green in there. Helps to give a little variety to uh, the trees. So they look very nice once they're done. Uh, we'll get into the uh, planting the trees in the next video. I'm sorry I didn't have much time this month to work on this video, so I don't really have a whole lot of time to plant the trees and show you where they go. But uh, get an idea how you're making them. Meanwhile, back on the silo project, trying to finish up these white silos. I put some uh, details around the top. You can see that uh, railing around the top and the safety ladders around there. I'll show you how that was done. That was kind of a tricky deal. I tried three different ways. The third way was finally uh, I had success with that. The first two were <laughs> didn't work very well. So uh, finally came up with a method that worked, and I'll give you the rundown on what I did there. I started with a uh, just a little pattern on a piece of paper, and then I put a transparency sheet on top of my pattern so I wouldn't get all stuck to that, and made some hoops. Again, the same idea of uh, putting the hoops in, uh, or putting the uh, strips of plastic in hot water, wrapped it around uh, a piece of uh, PVC pipe that I had, and wrapped that uh, around to uh, get the right size and dipped it in the boiling water for a few minutes to get make it hold its shape. That was a big part of the problem that I couldn't uh, get these things working very well because uh, they kept springing apart on me. So I, the trick was to try to make these hoops uh, first and then come in and glue the uprights there. And you can see I've got more more than I need on that hoop there. I'll be trimming the excess off of there shortly. but. Just slowly working my way around, putting the uprights in here on each little mark that I have on my pattern, and uh, just kind of carefully worked my way around. The uh, pattern here, of course, is the same diameter as the silo, and once I got all my uprights in there, just about all the way around, got one more to put in, and it helps to actually kind of get the um, pieces actually stuck to the uh, transparency sheet here because it's kind of like uh, almost like having a little bit of tape to hold everything together. So it kind of helps to have that on there but you have to be careful that when you remove it from the uh, transparency sheet to make sure that you've got everything loose and you don't end up pulling it all apart which is what I, <laughs> I did the first time. I didn't have everything uh, clear of that sheet and of course the first time I tried to lift it off I kind of ripped it apart and had to uh, come back and fix it again. So in my next uh, little trick was to use this little spacer, some little uh, pieces of 1 8 inch square styrene that I've got, and put the silo right down on top of that spacer. It's upside down here. And once the silo is uh, on there, I can come back and uh, go around the uh, base of the silo. A little bit of adjusting here, and then work my way around the base with some cement, and just cement those little posts right to the side of the silo there and that worked out pretty well. Helped to keep the railing nice and even around the top and then as I said it's a little tricky getting that that uh, hoop separated from the over the uh, transparency sheet. Uh, my first attempt I didn't do it right and ended up tearing it apart. I had to come back and <laughs> do it again. Uh, this time I made very careful that everything was separated before I lifted the silo off the pattern. And there we go. Okay, now everything's looking very nice here. Now all this still needed just a little bit of adjustment. And uh, not all the uprights got glued securely to the top of the silo, but uh, it was easy to go around and fix that. 
just add a little more glue and hold them into place. So there's my upper railing and I snipped out a couple uh, spaces in the railing to make room for the ladders. I made two more safety cage ladders. You can see there, a little fuzzy. Sorry about that. My camera wouldn't focus for me. And then I also had to cut out two little spots on the upper railing there for my rooftop uh, details there. So um, managed to get that all put together. So back on the layout, everything is looking very nice. Again, I'm uh, sorry I didn't have a whole lot of time to work on this video. So hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you next time on the monthly video journal. Whoopee! See you later. Bye-bye.